I recently went to the USC conference out in California, and one of the best things they had there was a room full of every possible difficult airway device you could imagine. And they were all really, really impressive, and they all worked really well. But they were also pretty expensive, most of them anyway. And I met a lot of people who did work in Africa and Haiti and other parts of the third world where expensive devices like these are just not affordable and not accessible. So I started to wonder if you could make a theoretical airway device out of supplies that you would find in any local clinic uh, in almost any part of the world. Note that I use the word theoretical. This is an experimental procedurette. You should not use it on real living people. And if you do, and if you kill someone, it's not my fault, and you're an idiot. The things you would need would be uh, two syringes uh, of different sizes, a, a 60 cc and a 30 is what I used here. Uh, two dental mirrors or small mirrors from a bike shop or something like that. Um, a hacksaw, a small uh, LED flashlight, and a bunch of tape. You'd also need some epoxy and some hot water, and I don't know what the magnifying glass is doing there. So the first step is to cut the ends off of each syringe at a 45 degree angle with the hacksaw. Next, uh, use some tape and, and mark out a little notch at the end of each syringe where you cut it and cut that notch out with the hacksaw. So you end up with two syringes, big and small, that both kind of look like Batman's head a little bit. Then you're gonna take the two mirrors and uh, fix them to the back of the 45 degree angle that you cut earlier and take both syringes and join them together base to base. This is where you'd use your epoxy or some epoxy putty. And you basically formed a periscope. So here's what you've got from top to bottom. You've got a dental mirror on one end at the angle you cut on the big syringe and the base of that big syringe is glued to the base of the smaller syringe, the 30 cc syringe. And down at the other end, you've got the other dental mirror. So the way it will work is that light will go in the aperture at the small end, bounce off the mirror, travel up through the lumen of both syringes, hit the mirror at the large end, and bounce out at a right angle to that mirror through the aperture where you can see it. You should then take the LED flashlight that you found and tape it to the bottom of the scope at the narrow portion that's going to be going into the patient's mouth. This is going to be your light source so you can visualize the patient's airway anatomy. So if this was an actual patient, you'd first swish a little hot water around inside the periscope just to heat the mirrors up so they don't fog. And then just put it straight back into the patient's mouth and when you look through the aperture at the top, you can clearly see the cords right there. The uh, image is a little unusual here because I have to use my iPhone. The autofocus on my regular camera gets thrown off by the reflections. But when you use your own naked eye, you can really see uh, quite well. The next step would be to take an ET tube with a stylet in it and come from the side of the patient's mouth, not through the periscope. And, oh, there it is. You can see the tip of the ET tube right there by the cords. The day is saved. So, once again, this is purely experimental, but there's probably ways to improve upon it, and I hope that maybe someday somebody can do something good with this.